Ron Bow, and today in Tuck Stirbo Talks, we're talking to Cicely Utrecht-Utri from Big Lab Pro Cycling about the 2019 season and the upcoming World Championships in Yorkshire. All right, it's Friday the 16th of August, and it's time for already the 15th episode of the Tuck Stirbo Talks podcast. Uh, before we start, just want a quick thank you to everyone listening to us and making it so far with us into the season. If you are enjoying our episodes, make sure you hit the pause button right now, leave us a rating and review, and press play again to listen to this awesome episode. We're going to get into it with one of the most entertaining riders in the sport of cycling, probably on and off the bike. We're going to put the hammer down with uh, Cicely Utrup Ludwig <laughs> from Big Lab Pro Cycling. <laughs> Welcome, Cicely. Um, thanks. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, thank you, and thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Um, are there already t-shirts made with Let's Put The Hammer oh. Down? <laughs> Actually, quite a funny question because, uh, yeah, I got answered that or I got asked that question. Um, no, I didn't make that yet. Uh, but, you know, it sounds like uh, like a good t-shirt to, to make. So maybe maybe that's a, that's a good thing to, to do in the future. <laughs> and I saw already because it was one of the Fed questions that came in. We won't use it as a Fed question, but and someone else responded with it with already with a T-shirt of the dead fish of the happy dead fish. Yeah, happy dead fish. <laughs> Holy moly, that's awesome! I mean, uh, I mean, really, really cool followers. Uh, yeah, I, I was actually a bit surprised that uh, that someone made that. And even we were racing in Scotland that, uh, last week, or and uh, there was also two two super super guys who made uh, who made a t-shirt uh, team sicily and they 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 uh, underneath it said powered by fanta because i'm i really like fanta so uh, that's i uh, that's awesome really it, it, it gives a lot of motivation when you see that do, do you notice that, that things have changed over the season after your famous maybe tour of flanders <laughs> interview that people even jump more on the sicily train Ooh, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it definitely, I mean, um, I definitely got more, um, yeah, media, you, you would say, um, because it, it, it got quite, um, quite viral, that interview. Um, so, so yeah, I think people noticed me a bit more after that interview. Um, and I, I also got a bit more followers, I think, after that interview. Um, so, yeah, uh, but pre- pretty cool. Yeah, and let's make it clear, it's definitely not all about the interview because you had a great classic season. Uh, just a few results, fifth in Strada, third in the Trofeo Alfredo Bina, third in Flanders, sixth in the gold race, eighth in Flash, tenth in Liège. You must have been happy with that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was a pretty good spring. I think my best spring this far. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, it was uh, it was a really, really good spring. Um, and, yeah, also... Uh, a, a new position as as uh, as a leader of the team, which was also new for me this year. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's 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 challenging, but you know, it's it's super much fun, and it's it's nice to to work with such a nice group of really really keen girls who just want to develop and who just want to go out and race and race hard. So, um, yeah, um, it was it, it has been a, a good season so far. I would say. <laughs> Do you then notice when you get those results that the other ladies in the peloton look at you in a different way or give you a bit more respect maybe than before? Or uh, I don't really put that much attention to to that. Um, I don't. I don't think that that uh, that they respect me more now. Um, yeah, I mean. You just get to know people better, you know. The 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 more years I cycle, the better you also know them. The better, you know, you you have chit chats with them in in the peloton or even off the bike. When now I'm uh, I live in Girona, and there's also quite a few cyclists living here. Um, so you know, then then you meet them off the bike and um, and yeah, get get to know the peloton more, which which makes it easier to, to you know say uh, if there is a if there's echelons going on or if there's you know crossman and stuff you know say hey come in because then then we're good friends so i i think uh, it's it's more that way it goes yeah just a little bit easier maybe to position yourself every now and then in the bunch yeah exactly all right so after that spring classics uh, campaign you went to the giro rosa and i think you were a little bit disappointed with that one how, how did you deal with that 
Oh yeah, I was quite disappointed because you know we we also try to prepare well and yeah then at the end I I had uh, yes pardon my French but I had quite a shitty preparation at the end because uh, yeah I chose to to crash um, yeah doing training and and I hit the the you call you call the tailbone. Um, quite bad and I don't know if you've ever tried to you know fall like if you walk and then you slip in a banana and then you hit directly on your ass you know oh, it hurts I tell you I mean I've never tried to fall that hard on my ass but holy crap it hurts it must not be comfortable to sit on the saddle all day <laughs> Oh no no! Um, I mean, at the at the beginning, I, I couldn't even I couldn't even sit to to eat. So, um, you know, just doing normal stuff. And then, luckily, uh, um, we we are in a cooperation with the with the clinic in in Basel in Switzerland. So they actually treated my ass, if I can say so, um, and uh, and it actually got better. So so I mean, so quickly. Um, and yeah, I mean, uh, because this happened, uh, 10 days or so before the Giro. Oh, wow. Um, so yeah, and I, and I had to take one week off the bike. <laughs> so yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't the ideal preparation, but at least I, I got back on the bike, you know, because at the beginning I, I thought, oh, I mean, I'm not even going to be able to start in the Giro. So it was actually, you know, um, it felt like uh, like a win just to start. And yeah, then obviously it was it wasn't the Giro we have we we hoped for. Um, yeah, but uh, but you know, life is sometimes a bit shit. And then you have races where yeah, it doesn't doesn't go. But then it it feels good to 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 go through these races and then to to bounce back. Um, and I think we we did that. Um, yeah, uh, for example, in La Course and and yeah, I was about we, to say because the way you bounced back, you you had like an awesome race in France. Yeah, and it was super cool, and there were so many spectators out and people writing the name on the street. I mean, it, seriously, it, it means so much when people, you know, they they do such an effort to write it down and to to come out, and people from Denmark cheering, you know, and you see the Danish flag, and you're like, yes, I mean, they they're here to cheer, and they're here to. Uh, that's just uh, that's so cool, and yeah, then then I had a a super good, I like Bigler had such a good race, and we were all the time represented. And it was just, oh, I was a really nice feeling with the with the whole team. So yeah, it was it was that was pretty awesome. Because it was such a hard race. Did you even still have time to then actually see your name at some point? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> okay, it sounds like it was a Sunday ride, yeah, and I had time to look at the views. No, it was not like that. But yeah, I mean. Uh, um, sometimes I also went to the front <laughs> of the films and and uh, and yeah, there there uh, I could I could see my my name going because we were going uphill, so then we go a bit slower. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I, I saw my name uh, further up the road. All right, and uh, you already talked about that your team uh, Big Lie had an awesome race there, um, and you already mentioned Scotland. And when we put the two together as a team, you had a great tour of Scotland already. Yeah. The, Unfortunately, the first stage was was uh, washed out. But after that, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was uh, it was actually a pity that the first stage in in Scotland was cancelled because there was simply so much rain, and and we we saw some pictures on top of the climb where it was like one meter of water. I mean, it was pouring down <laughs> um and you know sometimes you know you go through puddles and stuff and you're like ah i, I can do this but then you know when it comes like one meter i mean then it, it's it's not possible to to bike through um so i mean yeah um and and safety first so it was uh I, I understand completely that it got cancelled, um, but it was the the most hilly <laughs> stage. So unfortunately for us, yeah, then um, it, it, it was a pity. But I think uh, again on the on a yeah uh, more flat stage, we we bounced back again and uh, we were able to take the the um, stage victory and, and the GC at the end. So and and we took actually uh, all. 
we all the possible jerseys that we could get. So we got the young rider jersey and the TC and the sprint and the mountains. So yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, <laughs> when you come into a race and people would say, "So when you leave this race, you, you'll have all jerseys," and then I say, "Yeah, where do I sign?" You know, because it's um, that that's pretty awesome. Yeah, it was yourself actually who won that uh, mountains jersey, so don't be too shy. <laughs> um, <laughs> with with all the rain, was it a bit of a maybe just to get used to what might be coming up in Yorkshire in a month time? Yeah, um, yeah, it's 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 fun because this summer has uh, has also, especially also with the Giro, has been quite hot. Um, racing in 35 40 degrees and then suddenly coming and <laughs> racing in in 15 degrees and full rain that's that's a bit of a, a shock to the body but actually you know i like these kind of races uh, where it's it's a it's a bit cold and it and it rains um because yeah i mean i guess inside me i'm I still have some biking, you know, I'm, I'm still a bit Danish. So <laughs> I actually like when the weather gets a bit tough and rough. Um, so, uh, so I, I like racing in Scotland. Yeah, it wasn't the best weather, but it, it was, uh, it's, it's, it's a bit fun when it gets tough. Um, yeah, I like that. So they probably better watch out for you than in Yorkshire, um, <laughs> with a little bit of steep hills and then the, maybe a bit of rain. What, uh, what are yeah, your expectations? So. What are, yeah. What are your expectations for that race? <laughs> Oh, I mean, I hope for bad weather, actually, which is a funny thing to wish for. But uh, but yeah, I like when it gets uh, when it gets um, a bit tough. It's not only that it's tough physical, but also it's it's tough mentally because, yeah, s- some riders are already giving up when, when it gets when when it rains and it gets cold. Um, and yeah, I, I, I like it, actually. So I hope for, for a super hard race. And I hope, again, that we can show uh, how good women cycling is, you know, um, because when there are these events where it's it's uh, tel- uh, televised and, and people really where, where it gets viral and, and people can, can see it in a lot of different countries and stuff, people, I mean, that's at least the reaction I get when when um, it, it's possible to, to watch that they say, ah, you know, they some people they really open their eyes and they're like ah but women's cycling is actually super interesting and it wasn't and it wasn't nail biting final and stuff so yeah i i just hope that that we'll do that one more time yeah i'm pretty sure it's going to be accelerating race because so far basically like you said all the women's races that are televised have been that way Uh, do you already kind of like know uh what your lead up is going to look like towards yorkshire um, no, at the at the moment, uh, I, I don't really know. So I'll take uh, take one day at a time. Um, but uh, for sure, uh, a lot of training. <laughs> training in Den- in Denmark at the moment or in Girona? Oh, uh, hopefully, hopefully in Girona. I mean, there's so much better weather in Girona than it is in Denmark. It is actually a bit a bit miserable in Denmark at the moment. A lot of rain. Um, so I mean, yeah, uh, for training, it's a uh, it's a bit more nice to have uh, sunny and and uh, 28 degrees. I would say. <laughs> okay. We're going to move it to the Tux Turbo Talks fan question of the week. Uh, each week, everyone on the internet is sending their questions in for our riders. And also this week, we already uh, mentioned one about the T-shirts. Uh, that's mm-hmm. not going to be the question. Um, <laughs> we've got a question coming in from William Tienpont, and he was wondering, do you worry about the safety or should there be more safety regulations? Yeah, um, that's actually a, a super interesting question um, because, of course, uh, I worry a, a lot about safety, um, and that that also, of course, counts for for the races um, that when we do. I mean, especially the the motorbikes, um, which is which is quite dangerous, and we've seen also when you see the men's races uh, and the Tour de France, and yeah. Then, then you see also that sometimes it, it goes wrong when, when the motorcycles has to pass the peloton. Um, and that's always that's always super dangerous. And, and I remember when uh, I did Genvevelgem, I think it was last year, 
um, they they actually made sure that that non, no motorcycle had to pass the Pelton. So I think they were led in you know deviations, um, which is uh, which I, I thought at the moment was super cool to do because it makes it a much more safe race when um, when when yeah they have to to deviate um, out of. Uh, out of the course so uh so yet uh, I, I worry a lot about safety and and sometimes also we riders you know um if if it is a, a safety issue if it is weather wise or or uh, yeah w- whatever it can be um we riders also try to stand together and try to talk you know um across teams um and 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 stand up and say sorry but but this is this is too dangerous um so so yeah um but a good really good question and a really great answer thanks for that one uh, thanks. what we're going to do now just to wrap it up we're going to throw some uh, rapid fire questions so uh, just short questions and uh you could just have to probably answer with, uh, with one word um the <laughs> first question which we're going to use one of the fan questions actually that came in as well because it was a great one maybe you've already seen it it was from uh cnno 31 so the mm. first one is a uh, year supply of fanta for free or win your favorite race <laughs> <laughs> yeah um Oh, that's a good one. I, I would say win my favorite race. I'm sorry, Fanta, but um, favorite race, I, I would definitely like to win. I am a cyclist from inside out. So Okay, I'll give, I'll give you another shot and maybe at the Fanta. So if you can only have one thing for the rest of your life, what would it be, avocado or Fanta? Uh, avocado, definitely avocado. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one. Uh, Strada Bianchi or liege Baston liege <sighs> Ah, oh, that's a difficult one. Strade Bianche, I would say. World champion or Olympic champion? <sighs> Olympic champion. <laughs> what is the best nickname of one of your teammates? Uh, um, we call her Mickey Mouse, but her name is Michaela. <laughs> I think okay. that's a that's a pretty good nickname. <laughs> okay. Your favorite Netflix series? Ay, ay, ay. Um, maybe, I mean, I'm not that good at, at watching a series, but maybe Prison Break. I don't know. Yeah. The song you enjoy dancing to the most? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, what is the song? Uh, oh, that's a tough one. Because it depends on my mood, you know. Hey, sometimes it's more slow. Sometimes it's more fun. More, mm, I don't know. I, I can't. I can't give you. I can't give you one song. That's, okay, so that, it's, let's let's say it's Friday now. So it's Friday night. Let's say you would be in a. You, you probably won't be, but let's say you would be in a bar and there would be music on. What would you be dancing to? <laughs> I mean, of, some kind of pop music. Um, uh, yeah, uh, there's, there's not a song that pops into my mind. Um, okay. yeah, we'll skip this one. <laughs> All right. Yeah, sorry la- for that. No, the last one, <laughs> who's going to win the world championships in Yorkshire? Oh, <laughs> um, you know, the, the safe answer would be to say a a Dutch girl, a girl from Holland. <laughs> um, but yeah, hopefully the the Danes, you know, can uh, can challenge them. So, yeah, the yeah that 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 would be my answer. Again, a bit shy. You, you are allowed to answer your, with your own name if you want to. <laughs> uh, but I don't like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks so much for your time and good luck in the preparations for Yorkshire. Thank you. And thanks for having me. It was, uh, it was cool to, to join the podcast. Yeah, awesome to have you on. All right, people. Thanks for listening. Uh, this was Rob Bau with Cicely Utrecht-Ludwig from Big Love Pro Cycling. Stay tuned for a new Tux Turbo Talks next week.